you. And we are live, by the way. Hello, hello. Let me get some spam out. <clears throat> yeah, I actually zoned in in the middle of town here, which actually showed off one of those things where uh, the QA server slows down a little bit from live, and live is also a little slow, but you can see, if, well, if you can see the bottom bar of my nameplate word over it, you can see it loading up the percentages, and mm -hmm. it gets like one percentage, you know, that goes from zero to 100. There's another one that goes to zero to 100, zero to 100, zero to 100. That's loading, what that's doing is our logic for loading into a town, into a city. Hey, thank you very much, Lancel. Uh, but the logic for loading into a city is it loads the required stuff for the city, like all the city deco stuff. But then it finds the your house, if you have a house in the city, uh, loads all that stuff. But then it also loads the houses immediately around you. So it'll load like four or five houses. So my guess is one of these houses, well, looks like several of them have a ton of deco. So that made it take longer to load in. Pro tip. <laughs> ah yes, the turkeys and the flowers. All right, and we are loud. Uh, I wacko no. So I did I check it in with that turned on? It's not supposed to. Our emulation is not supposed to stay on between zone changes. Did I batch change all of them and pick up? Emulation as well. Let me go look. Mm. I think I explained emulation was not supposed to be persistent because if it were persistent, okay, it's not persistent. Yeah, I think that that my tweet on that was a little confusing. I think I said something about they named off like three skills or something, or maybe you named off three skills, and I said that yeah, they should be persistent, and then I said emulation. Uh, hasn't been pers persistent because you could kill NPCs or PvP players in the overworld. But it yeah. that emulation was going to be persistent. It is not persistent, I just verified. It does get it is getting double the duration uh, compared to what it had before. Oh, I don't have the uh, bot up. And it seems like it's getting close to that time of month where it makes me refresh my key for the bot, so I may have to spend a minute doing that. And I said I was going to stream early, but uh, honestly, I'm exhausted. Long week, and yesterday, I attempted to take the day off. I failed. Uh, but I did manage to get out for a flu shot. So now I'm dealing with some mild flu symptoms in terms of some aches and flu-y type right, stuff. It seems to me that you failed to take a full day off every day. Well, yeah, yesterday I think I was on at 3 a.m. And then I was on at 9 p.m. fixing the... Uh, them missing we had a server go missing uh it's not wasn't a critical server but it went completely missing and uh wizard smoke and ravelox apparently spent hours trying to find it and they couldn't locate it uh if in case you were wondering you probably didn't even know what that chat was about elgarion but that was uh oh, really? hey thank you thank you sir frank and thank you stun rock for the follow way to start us off right there frank thank you thank you uh but uh yeah, so that we've had some tests. We have, uh, I think we've talked about this before. And again, these streams, if you're new to them, I always try to talk about some dev stuff, some game stuff, some random stuff, some talk about fish. The fish are relaxing today. They had an ammonia spike. I don't know what happened there, but nobody died. I took a head count, uh, but their ammonia went up, so I'm giving them a relaxing day. Actually, I leave the light off because if I turn the light on, they'll get angry and riot because I didn't feed them today. Uh, but we have a ton of different internal tests that we run. We have some, like we run for bot tests, we have some production tests, we have integration tests, uh, which I'm sure uh, you're becoming familiar with now, Elgarion, now that you're in there and breaking things. Uh, but uh, one of the, there's a couple of tests that are kind of like for production stuff to make sure everything's working. One of them was connect on QA, connect to the QA Let's see, it's the log server, not the log in server, uh, which doesn't do what it sounds like it does. It's not like our metric server or anything like that. It, it basically is the, you connect to it, just as a couple things, but you connect to it to get the message of the day and some other stuff like that. 
really simple, but that server had vanished. I saw it vanish a while back, and then I was just about to release a QA build, and it wouldn't QA build wouldn't start. And I tracked it down to that and basically just went and commented out the code and did a quick build and threw it up there, and we forgot about it for a while. Uh, but that server vanished. We got a lot of servers. We run uh, VMs on servers is usually how they vanish. But I tracked it down to the person who installed it, installed it on a machine called spare box that was the name of the vm so obviously <laughs> spare box uh was the log server for the qa machine but that's why you guys weren't getting login messages on qa uh for the last two or three months it was because that box had been down and i commented out the code that required it uh but anyways so that was me last night finding it and it was a server that had been misnamed and it uh, the server had been put to sleep to save memory for other processes on that machine because it's just a big VM. But anyways, yeah, that's what I was doing late last night. The movie, we do a movie night every single night. Uh, we have since the pandemic started. It seems like a tough right. tradition for us to break, but it's usually we try to do something. Last night was uh, 101 Dalmatians. Oh, okay. Not one of my favorites. So mm -hmm. I was doing work instead of watching 101 Dalmatians. It's not bad. It's just if you've seen it like three times or whatever. Yeah. <sighs> totally unrelated to the game talk, I know. But that's why I was working late last night. Someday I'll take a good day off. I think I, the only way that happens is if I turn my computer off. Yeah. Disconnect. Oh yeah, let's see. Are questions working? Uh, blah, 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 blah. I haven't seen a question go in. I don't see a question yet. Yep. Okay, there Well, not one, not one with exclamation point question. Yeah. Ah, there's one. There's a long one. <clears throat> oh, that's a you, you question. Uh, I was going down reading some of the other stuff here from the early people. And thank you, Skeggy Media, for the raid with 16 viewers. And uh, again, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sir Frank, for all the stuff. Great talking to you this week. Let's see. Oh, and uh, talking to Sir Frank, uh, had an idea that we're 99% going to be doing for the, as the add-on for the Lord of the Isle. I keep talking about I'm not sure why I'm looking down there when the camera's up there. Uh, we keep talking about sexing up the Lord of the Isles, and of course anything we add to them will be added, back added to it. Uh, well, this is one that was a request. Someone had a request that I think somebody else said, uh, probably not, but I'll mention it. But the request was they wanted to use the fishing expedition map as a pot template. So, hey, thank you very much. Uh, oh, well, first, thank you, uh, Karina. Is there Karen Ailspawn? There's so many different ways on these things. That uh, underscores in there that can be pronounced like so many different ways. Car in all car. Uh, can't quite get to uh, naughty things, but anyways. And also, thank you, thank you, thank you, Bodacious88. Oh, but anyway, so they were wanting to use the uh, the fishing expedition as a pot. I know what you're saying. No, that'd it's be amazing. Not, it's not. No, Winfield. I'm not saying that. That's awesome. Uh, it was not Winfield who suggested that. Uh, but oh, anyways, <laughs> that would be a good guess, though. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely would. But so far, we've looked into it. I don't see any reason if we we can't. Uh, if we do, and I believe we're going to be adding this to the Lord of the Isles is just like a special tweak form is they'll get an extra uh, super small pot that'll be free come with it. That'll be the fishing expedition because nothing screams Lord of the Isle more than having your own little island. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it'll have one, basically it'll have like the one lot. There's actually, it's already a pot uh, and there's one lot on it already. It'll have space for basically one lot, and then we'll add in one castle lot that's the type that if you use it, it appears, and if you don't, it goes away. So, uh, that will probably be coming up. Again, only 99% sure. I've talked it over with uh, most of the people who have to do the work, and only a few screams of agony 
and terror by Sanyo. Uh, but none of them seemed like vicious. As a parent, mm-hmm. I'm able to uh, recognize like the fake scream from the actual scream. Uh, like if Maxine gets hurt. Uh, and I think those were all fake screams on his part. I don't think he was actually hurt by any of those things you mentioned that were problematic. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much, Crafty Method, for the follow. And thank you, Waldo Ptolemy. I love saying that name. Waldo Ptolemy. Oh, and we're three minutes late. Uh, greetings, avatars. Thank you for joining us on the stream today. If you are new to the stream, my name is uh, Chris Atos uh, Spears. Uh, like everyone else in the project, I do lots of stuff. I'm going to save some time and do the introduction. This up here is Elgarion Rick. Uh, he also, when he joined the project, we were just going to say, we thought he'd just be like, I do streaming stuff, and that's how we introduced him. He also does tons and tons of stuff. CS guy, uh, kind of a, uh, almost you're doing some like project manager type stuff. And by that, staying on, I mean staying on top of us like uh, Starwood, only you don't yell at us as much as Star. <laughs> just, uh, but also uh, CES, and now adding tons of content that the players are going to freaking love. It's been fabulous. Yeah, I learned uh, two amazing things this week, guys. Uh, I've created three crafting recipes, and also two inky NPCs that you guys will be seeing in the future. Let's see. Uh, and he doesn't just do store stuff. He does other stuff, too, but he does do a lot of the store stuff. Oh, uh, store and the store dude, yep. <laughs> yeah. Steward of the store. Uh, but there's lots of other stuff out there uh, that he does. But uh, anyways, thank you for joining our Friday stream. We do these just about, I think we've done every Friday. I don't think we've ever missed a Friday, like in, I don't even know how long. It's got to be like 250 weeks plus or something. Oh, you know what? It wasn't until about 100 weeks ago that we started doing the streams every Friday. It was kind of an evolution to get here for those who don't know the history. We actually started off with stupid streams where we would stream for 24 hours straight the whole time. (laughs) Me and Star and Richard and a few other people on stream for 24 hours straight drinking the whole time. Uh, and being silly and and of course that was before we actually had a game to talk about now we have a game to talk about uh, but uh, I think then we moved to like monthly streams then we moved to like twice a month and now we just do every Friday we just do an hour stream so we can catch up with you guys keep up with things uh, I see treasure piles saying they were not stupid they were fun well we'll I, I keep saying I'm gonna bring back some uh, drink into the stream maybe that'll be next week do we have anything special going on next week I'll tell you why guys well, next Friday or what, what's your schedule like out and we didn't talk this over ahead of time are you are you busy next Friday are you going drinking next Friday I go to the pub every night so it won't be any difference <laughs> there's a pandemic man not in Cheyenne, Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got a different <clears throat> life down there in Austin. It's tiny yeah. up here. Yeah, that's. I just saw, speaking of that, uh, we'll get in the reminders to be safe early in the stream this time. We normally forget to do it at the last minute, but everybody out there, be safe. I saw the Longhorns game. Uh, I'm wearing a Longhorn shirt today, by the way. Uh, but the uh, Longhorns game. Which I'm glad they're having football again. I just wasn't a big fan of the idea of having crowds. Uh, it felt kind of like a bad idea. But they required students to get tested ahead of time. And it was, I think it was 1,094 students got tested before the game. Uh, and they had to test negative to go to the game. And 10%, like 100 and something of them, tested positive. So those were just people who got tested purely because they wanted to go to the game. And 10% of them were positive. So... All right, cool. So, yeah, that's awesome. Not wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, colleges, it's going to be crazy here for a while because, of course, younger people, younger, healthier people tend to not uh, show symptoms and they're asymptomatic but can still spread. Uh, they are less likely to spread, fortunately. But the way college kids behave, they'll spread. <clears throat> All right, but anyways, what was I what was I going to talk about here? So we got a lot of stuff going on this week. Let's see, is my horse working here? 
I've got to find my Palomino, how to add the Palomino. So that's, I'm actually on QA here. If you guys have seen, I've been keeping QA up to date pretty much daily. I've been trying to get stuff out because it seems like every single day this week, we've had something come up where it's like, wow, I want to get that to the players. Let me do a QA build. Wow, I want to get that to the players. Let me do a QA build. Uh, so that I think every day this week, I may have published a QA build. Now, what I did realize just before we went live on the stream while I was publishing the QA build is last Friday I did a live build, tested it, never published it. Uh, there, there are only a few fixes in it, but that was, uh, so you guys haven't had a live build in a while here. So I've done an amazing job of keeping the version that hardly anybody plays uh, up to date. But uh, so some of the stuff on here, there should be, now the horses, the mount should work. The whiskey should work. I had some local changes uh, that did not make it in. The other alcohols were in there, but the whiskeys weren't working, I think. The whiskey should now work for the buffs. The buff channel stuff should work. Uh, what what exciting stuff did you put in? I know everybody on the team has a bunch of exciting stuff they put in. Well, uh, one, the uh, craft, this is in the announcement today, the crafting stations, now all 40-ish crafty, crafting stations of the four categories um, have a functional deco surface or surfaces. Um, yeah, they've been asking for that for a long time. Um, and then on QA, uh, I guess with your patch you did today, uh, the castle wall sets, all of those, uh, uh, horizontal and vertical deco surfaces. Um, I did some rudimentary testing all over the place with them, each set, each piece, and they were looking pretty good and solid already. But they're on QA for, and we got a testing directive for other people, uh, the the bug brigade, to help us out uh, playing around with those and looking for flaws, and most especially, looking for decoration that can't be placed on the walls. And the reason is, is because if you have a decoration that's an exterior wall item or an interior wall item on a house, it doesn't mean it can be placed on a vertical surface of another decoration. That's another checkbox. So be sure to report those to me on that testing directive thread, and I'll uh, and I'll get those decorations fixed. Most especially, I'm looking at like wall lights. <coughs> Uh, heraldry banners. I've already fixed the ivy and pushed that in, but I'm probably already going to do those three things. Uh, you know, definitely all the Coda store wall lights and the um, and the uh, the banners right away, probably Monday morning. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Inky stuff. We've got uh, expect uh, two ish, yeah, right around R82, two inky uh, NPCs that uh, people will get to monkey around with also. And um, let's see here. And then all next month, I'll try to get in a, a, maybe a good handful of other inky NPCs to include like elves, satyr, all those. Those will be premium ones on the Kodo store. Yeah, lots of quality of life stuff uh, going into just I've been taking a lot of feedback on different skills that there's no reason they shouldn't persist or they shouldn't be usable on the overworld. But I've been trying to get a lot of those things more usable in the overworld, like I guess dash was not usable in the overworld. Uh, and also shields, I looked into a lot of the different shield stuff and uh, uh, ended up after doing some of my own playing uh, ended up doubling the duration of shields uh, there's still a reason to keep them short enough so you feel like you have to recast them some you know fairly often but I don't feel they have to be as short as they were so there should be most of the shield spell should be double duration uh, let's see what else uh, let me go ahead and thank a few people here before I lose track of them thank you Hen him new, him new for the follow. We love the follows. That means that there's new people paying attention to the game. Uh, Treasure pile, uh, still love the name. Uh, thank you for the hundred bits. Trokip, Trokip, five hundred bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Trokip. Cardinal Espana, thank you for the follow. Malhari, three hundred bits, and she, I clicked the button twice. Three hundred bits and three hundred bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, and also if, no pressure. Uh, but if we do get one of the, uh, what's that thing called? The hype train. hype train. If we get a hype train going, uh, if we get a, if we get a hype train and what, if we complete like level two, maybe we'll say, I think we were saying level three, but then we discovered level three is really, you completed level two. So let's say if you complete level, we'll move it up a notch. They always do that and that's not much pressure for them. But if not, don't worry about it. But we'll do extra, we'll do an extra round of prizing for each uh, level of that, that thing. Uh, we do the prizing. Do you want to tell them how to get in on the prizing? Well, sure. Them? You either buy something on the web add-on store, or in in-game chat you type a September to remember into in-game chat. 
Wait a minute, is it talk like a pirate day? Did I miss that? Was I talking like a pirate? No, I, someone's mentioned that, and I saw like a couple of memes posted today. I'm sure they'll tell me. Me typing a September to remember into the in game chat. How about that? Oh, it isn't. It's tomorrow, they say. Oh, take it back. I didn't say okay. it that way. Woo, that was a close one. I was going to say, that was one of those things in an office. You kind of miss out on some of these things when you work from home. You miss talk like a pirate day. We'll have to type like a pirate day. There you go. <laughs> uh, let's see. What other stuff? So, again, uh, for those who missed it, we didn't really set a topic today. We, I know we're going to have a lot of questions from people. Uh, the food channel stuff is in. Uh, Beezus. Uh, I have a uh, old Gary on here as a witness. Beezus said he was working on it. Mm -hmm. He's got to get him checked in. If he does not have him checked in by Monday or Tuesday, uh, he's always busy with a lot of stuff. Uh, but if he does not have him checked in by Monday or Tuesday, I'm going to take a pass uh, and uh, put those in. The alcohols, the alcohols in the current QA uh, should be a good example. Now, those are one-point buffs. That's kind of what you should expect roughly for a one-point buff. And uh, that's one of the things I guess I'm going to talk about today is some of the buff how the food stuff is changing and alcohol stuff works in there. Uh, and also, thank you again, Bodacious88. I think he was trying to get a little hype train on there. It didn't work. 399 Avatar update. So the next one's 400. Yes, actually. Yeah, or 82. Maybe that live stream you'll just sing the entire time is to celebrate. I don't know. No, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I see Master Elis ask a uh, question. Are we keeping the 2x XPs for a bit longer, please? You are, but only because I've been super, super duper crazy busy. Uh, I don't want to, for those who have seen some of the changes that have gone into the game lately, we actually have a, uh, a system where we can scale NPCs. We can put them in, we can have them do different stuff. They have different you know, power, they have different uh, you know, attack types if we want them to they also give different experience rewards. So that works by using our combat system. So let me actually pull up something. Let me do the ever risky thing of sharing my, you know, you know what? I can just drag the window up to the top part there. I don't even have to do that. Uh, let's see. Let me get uh, F2. Monster zip, is that it? Nope, that's drops. There it is. Okay, let's look at a bear. We will look at bear grizzly zero. Okay, let me pull this uh, window out here. And make sure I don't have anything super secret on here, and then I'll pull it up and share it with you guys can see behind the scenes. All right, here we go. I can share this with you. I don't see anything super secret there. I'm gonna have to make you big and I'm covering up your face so we can really just okay. see your arms. Uh, this is uh, how things, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is how things look for creature definitions. Now this is only one of about 20 different files, but in for the episode one creatures, we have, this is how you define like strength, dexterity, intelligence for a creature. That defines a lot of their stuff. Uh, for the episode two stuff, we actually have it where we can use uh, expressions for things. We can actually just put in math saying, here's what I want things to be. And you can see for a bear, uh, this is for an episode two bear, grizzly bear underscore zero. He gets uh, 25 times level scale. Now level scale, the part of why this is appealing is these level scale and adventure well, adventure level something we define level scale level scale health level scale xp these are all things that i can go in it's a formula somewhere that's got a table built up for it and i can change these so if i want to go in and say hey you know what uh episode two creatures are about the right toughness but it seems their damage isn't scaling up on the melee types as they get up into the higher tiers i can go and change this level scale formula at one place go and change a table to change how that scales with its level. Uh, and then that changes all the creatures. So it's, again, this is, for those who heard me talking about this when I was working on it 
three or four months ago, this was as much as anything, this was about being able to have things that are maintainable and sustainable. Uh, so we can have stuff without having to go and touch a thousand, literally a thousand different uh, pieces of data to go and update. If I want to go and like say, hey, all creatures in the game that are level, you know, 12, I want them to have blah. Uh, I'd have to go and touch just hundreds of files, even just one text. So this makes it so it's more maintainable, it's more sustainable. I think I mentioned one of the things I was trying to do was switch to... Uh, up the experience scale for the level scale and I want to do that before I turn off the double experience points which is how this ties into the double experience points as I'm showing this thing so you can see there's actually a level scale uh, experience point thing now when we look compare that to something like a dragon uh, for instance here is a ancient black dragon you can see down here he actually gets level scale XP times 5 that means if you have a dragon that's level 120 and you have a bear that's level 120 the dragon is worth five times the experience points but you can also look and see like his strength expression is bigger uh dexterity expression is bigger the intelligence like all this stuff is bigger and then you get down into his actual other stuff that's defined uh it's all bigger but uh and that's why he gets x level xp times five now, this is how episode two creatures work, but if we look at that same bear over here in episode one, he looks something like this, where he's got all the hard to find. So the thing I have not done is I need to finish a process that will go through and take all these guys and basically convert, fill in this field with values that I want for him. Uh, once that happens, then I'll have much more control over the experience point and be able to change the experience points then then, once that's done and tested and I have it on QA for release, so hopefully this will happen like shortly after this next release and I can leave it on QA for next release, then I'll turn off double experience points. But now the goal is, uh, right now I think a lot of our numbers are just bad in general. And not only they're bad, but they're really inconsistent in terms of how it relates to the difficulty of the creature. So that's this is trying to get that stuff both a lot more unified for episode one stuff as well as episode two. Uh, so anyways, once that's done, then I'll have control over the XP and it won't be a monumental and highly error prone task to go and update some of these numbers. Then I'll be able to tweak the experience points and get, or experience points and get them to where I want them uh, much more quickly and safely. Then I'll turn off double experience points. But I want those two things to happen at the same time. I don't want to just turn off double experience points and then, you know, it's everybody's getting half what they were before. I want to make sure that we move to a system that's more uh, usable and more fair in terms of difficulty. And I'll be honest, a lot of this is I'm looking at a lot of metrics to see, like, you know, have these creatures from how long do they live? Once they're engaged in combat, how long do they live? How much damage do they do deal? So I'm trying to take in a lot of that stuff uh, uh, into factor the you know, for how difficult they are. Uh, so there may also be some creature tweaks that come up with that as well, because I know there's a lot of creatures out there that are just pathetic. Uh, so anyways, uh, there's been a few bug fixes this release as well uh, that I'll mention. Some of them affect just pets and tamed creatures, uh, but others affect the actual creatures you guys fight as well. For instance, a lot of these guys have had uh, most things that are level uh, tier 10 or higher, like level 100 or higher, uh, is roughly the equivalent. Most of those guys have always had some type of enrage effect, which has minor stuff. The big thing about it, though, is when they enrage, they get a, an attack speed buff. So the attack speed buff was not attack speed buffing. So this was true both for uh, tamed pets and also for uh, normal pets, if they had some type of attack speed buff, this was true for all creatures who enraged. So now creatures that enrage will actually get whatever their attack speed buff was. Uh, but anyways, that's another thing. We're throwing out quality of life improvements and bug fixes and other stuff there. Oh, I I'm still the screen, taking, up the, I'm taking up the whole screen. Yeah, you're still right big. There you go. Now they can go back to me staring at a wall instead of looking at you. I'm not sure which is better. 
Uh, let's see. Did we have any other stuff we want to tease here before I jump into some of the questions that are coming in? Well, there's going to be it's going to be a really good release. Lots of good stuff coming up. I, um, some good surprises, definitely. Um, you can you want to spoil some? You got any favorite things coming up here? Well, I'm hesitant to spoil other people's work uh, oh. just because some of them really want to wait to the official announcement, especially like Damon and Keith and stuff. So, um, oh yeah, I think they, maybe. How about this? I saw a question. Are the questions posted yet? Because I can answer. Uh, you, I have be not some spoilers. posted the questions. You can go ahead and post. Uh, I've not got my. I got to get the thing up so I can see the questions, and I'll copy them over. There was one question I think about. Uh, can we, you know, please make more use of ancient uh, um, essences? Yes. That's what you get when you salvage artifacts. Get an ancient essence, which can be used to repair an artifact, and people are claiming <laughs> that they are basically stockpiling them. Uh, well, two of the three recipes I created use ancient, ancient essences. One of them uses three, and that's to craft a tier 15 lich spawner for your player created dungeons. And that's three of many ingredients, you know. I mean, sorry, three ancient essences are just one of the ingredients uh, in that list. Uh, start saving your aortic thrombuses. Just going to oh, say that. Oh, you're finally and, finding a use for it. Yeah, absolutely. And then. Uh, uh, the inky NPC, uh, one of them, the craftable one, is going to uh, use one ancient essence and also use some aortic promises, not as much. They're very similar recipes, but not quite identical. Uh, so the idea is that a, a tier, that's a tier 15 lich spawner, so like a tier 10 lich spawner, that'll be my next one I do, I guess. And that'll be, uh, uh, and I gotta figure that out, by the way, how you did those, so I can copy it. Um, a tier 10 lich spawner would be like two ancient essences plus, you know, a little bit less of each of the ingredients. And then a tier 5 lich spawner would be one ancient essence plus a, a batch of the uh, same ingredients, just smaller amounts. Well, that's one of the things I'm working on. I mentioned it. I started it today. I've not even got close to checking it in or after lockdown, but uh, I do ignore the lockdown a bit more than I probably should. Uh, and also I'm excited about them, but I'm still working on the thing I mentioned. Uh, one of the big things we have right now is, and again, you guys say this stuff, we say it internally too, uh, but you know, we have these new scenes coming online, but we haven't given you good enough reasons to go there. It's like, yes, it's great to go and explore a scene, see a scene, you know, but after you've done it a couple times, unless there's a good reason to go there, uh, you're probably just going to end back up at whatever scene is the easiest experience point, you know, low risk, whatever. Uh, so unless we give you guys a reason to be there, and of course one of the big reasons we normally would give you to be there is to, uh, some type of rewarding loot or unique loot. Uh, so I'm working on some of that stuff. But uh, I'm actually using the ancient essences in those as well that will probably... I. Uh, haven't finished the recipes for them, but it'll probably end up being a recipe that uses an ancient essence uh, to create a consumable. You have to pick up uh, stuff from those scenes to create them, but then when you use it, it will be a one-time use consumable, but it will give a special blessing to anyone near you, party or not party, uh, that'll probably be on a different channel with the idea for these being, again, it'll be AE, so you can like the idea being that you, you can get on Universal, like, hey, I'm about to pop a, you know, a whatever, uh, uh, Elgarion's uh, uh, Elemental uh, Elastic, uh, I can't come up with any more E stuff. But anyways, uh, buff, uh, blessing uh, orb, and then people will be like, give me a minute, I'll be there, and they'll run over and they'll everybody will come to get the, the blessing, then it'll go off and it'll, it'll probably be a 24-hour buff or a 72-hour buff, kind of like the blessings are. Uh, but anyways, that being one of the things that's going to come out of there. So hopefully that will go. And that's another one that will use ancient essences. And again, this is one that is, yeah, but it could also be, you know, 40 people could be affected by it. Uh, you know, if you get on your guild or whatever, and it's like going to pop one here and everybody gets together. So uh, we'll see if that makes this release. I'm working on the other thing I'm working on right now is pet food. This is actually near and dear to my heart, not nice. just because it's been requested uh, a lot by the very, very noisy tamers. 
Uh, and I see I got a lot of people here to thank too. I'll do it in a minute though. But I see uh, Waldo's being super generous. I can't believe that didn't kick off a uh, what should we call it a a hype train. Huh. That's stunning. They're pacing themselves too well, I think. Uh, but uh, it's also near and dear to my heart because I have. For those who don't know, there's uh, I have a dog named Mojito. He's not in here with me. He is a trader. All I have in here with me now are fish. But uh, he has eaten the exact same dog food food from Costco since the day he was born. Uh, it comes in cans. It has like 12 cans, 12 green cans, 12 red cans. I don't even know what they are. I just know red and green, and I have to alternate between them so he doesn't get completely hooked on one, and it screws up his stomach when I switch. But he's had that dog food, and... Uh, Costco apparently stopped making that dog food. They don't list on their website. They don't list it anywhere. Uh, so this is a pretty traumatic event for us because we had to switch Mojito off of his dog food, and he has been incredibly gassy, uh, which you wouldn't think that a 10-pound greyhound would be able to be gassy to a noticeable level, but he has been very gassy, and it's been painful, especially, as I mentioned earlier, we're doing movie nights now, so he's gassy during that. So pet food, to me, is something that's definitely been on my mind lately. Uh, you'll be happy to know, though, I did find uh, cans of that. I bought six cases. I bought, uh, like, a year and a half supply for, for Mojito. So, hopefully, if they don't bring it back, we're covered for a year and a half. So, Cool story, right? I know they love it when we tell these personal, <laughs> these personal stories. They never get angry and start yelling about, Answer questions! Talk about the game! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I did post the questions up there if you want to grab any. Here's uh, one up top see... for, from Sean Butts. Uh, why aren't conversationalists town placeable? Uh, I'm not sure why specifically, and I don't know for certain if I just simply click a checkbox that they'll actually work in a POT, but I'll test it. But if not, it'll probably be a bigger project to get them to work. Because uh, they seem to be one of those things, Chris, where it only works. Uh, well, no, they work when the owner's not around. So maybe it would work. I don't know. Like the target dummies, mm -hmm. you know, those only work when the uh, owners are around. I still haven't looked at that. And that, again, it's something yeah. I know we can fix. Uh, we have other things that behave the way that we want those guys to be fixed. Uh, it may just be a significant task to update it. Uh, here's another one, which I didn't even know about. Maybe you know more about it. Serenia Melorian says, when will the fishing leaderboard be fixed? Is the fishing leaderboard broken? Well, I thought it was a little while ago, like a few weeks back, and it got it up and running. Is there something wrong with it again? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. This is another one of those where that leaderboard uh, undone maintains that thing. And I thought, yeah, I thought he got it working again. Maybe it has, uh, maybe it broke again recently. But the last time, and again, it's one of those things where it breaks occasionally for random reasons. Uh, I think it, we broke it with a fish name that came in that was causing some problems with it. We broke it with the special characters and names. It was, I think, one of the things that broke it. Uh, uh, somebody was with special characters with names, uh, special characters in their name, uh, broke it. Were well, it's got data in it. I don't know if it's, you know, actually, like, updating with new data, though. Um, oh, maybe that's it. Yeah, that's type of stuff we wouldn't notice as, as quickly. Oh, that's good, Bridge Troll. Uh, Moose once bit my sister. That's uh, where we have uh, Monty Python, the Holy Grail, on our movie night list of things to watch with Maxine. Cause that's totally a movie for a six-year-old. All right, um, let's see. Let's that, see here. Someone riding around on a horse. Is that what? what's going on there? Are you Hondas? Are, is that the Hondas on a horse? Hold on, let me go check them out here. Are you on QA right now? Yeah. I see him running around in a T-pose. For those who don't know, when you see it in a computer game, this is called the T-pose. That right there, that's kind of the base state for, for guys. I know if you were if it were really a T-pose, he'd have his arms straight up to the sides, but that's this is kind of the state that uh, uh, models are kept in. Uh, this is something that's... Uh, been welded into my brain because on Tabula Rasa we had a guy who his only job was basically the animation state machine, full-time programmer, uh, and it was always broken, always, always having problems. I see entered mount state with no mount item. Aha! So I think what's going on there is I'm seeing him try to do the mount. This is good that we're getting on multiplayer because we've tested it now in single player. Uh, one and only will be so happy to hear about this, but you can see, I guess you guys can't see. That other people can't see it. 
Let me move my thing out of the way here so you can see. There it is. If you look well, down there, it'd be uh, like the Emperor's new horse, right? Yeah, the devs get a special console down there that shows some errors that come up so that we don't miss them. And it says entered mount state with no mount item. So I think it's he's not checking to see if it's me doing it, which then causes an exception, then blocks me from seeing his horse. So I pretty sure that's what's going on. We've had that type of uh, problem many times before. So, well, that's good. It's still on uh, QA. Uh, I think we had some people. I should had get on the horse myself here. Uh, I'll do that in a minute. But I think we've had some people asking about what's the state of mounts. So obviously mounts are on QA. Obviously they got a few bugs. That's a one-liner fix. I'm not worried about that. There's uh, we're still waiting on animations from Damon to make it look smoother. Uh, right now it's just all animations that already existed and somehow one and only managed to massage them, get it all working so that it doesn't look terrible. It does not look great right now. Uh, so that's going to be the polish. We'll probably leave it in on QA for one release uh, while it gets polished. I think he's putting uh, saddles on them too, right? Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Spoilers! <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't think that's so. We, super speaking cool. of spoilers, which I won't go into because this would definitely be a big spoiler for, and steal some of Damon's thunder. But um, Dart and Obscure asks, "Are there exciting new Halloween things this year?" Well, one, I did spend a lot of time making sure that old like fall and uh, spooky items would be available on the upcoming recurring spooky or the vault stuff coming up. So you'll see a lot of things that you hadn't been able to see maybe last year since they weren't loaded in the Coda store yet. But also. Damon kind of went crazy with some awesome uh, spooky related things. Okay. So uh, yeah, you'll. I think you guys are really gonna like what you see. Yep. Now I'm gonna guess he Hondas is probably on the channel there. Uh, but I'm gonna guess he does not see my horse. So I think this is one where, uh, and again, this is a common one. Uh, which uh, easy fix is one and only has a bunch of custom code in there to handle this stuff in the state machine and he wasn't checking to see if I if it was me doing something or the other person doing something because we have to execute stuff that happens just in general we have to execute it on everybody's machine so we've got to like push me into the I'm riding a horse uh, animation state and push that guy you know so he needs to see I'm on a horse uh, I need to see myself on a horse, so I think he just forgot to do a uh, check to make sure on that state. But anyways, uh, we'll get that fixed, but uh, again, it kind of looks like I'm doing like uh, an intentionally bouncing up and down feet and stirrups or something like that. That's I don't even know what animation he's playing to make that work. But apparently we had an animation that kind of looked like this. Maybe I, we might have pulled frames out of the uh, coconut animation that we had. Because you kind of do like a gallop on that, speaking of Monty Python. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyways, but it's it's getting closer. It's not going to be ready for this release. Uh, so you'll probably be able to see it on QA and see it develop on QA over the next release. I know it's weird. We're using QA to actually QA stuff. Isn't that crazy? What? Uh, we're breaking new ground. We're innovators. All right, let me get back over here to some questions. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, can we please have a look at the damage avoidance debuff from Blind? I don't think it's working. Bug report here. Uh, I'll check for that. Uh, to see what's going on with that. That should be a pretty easy fix if it's not working. I believe it's just applying a negative damage avoidance buff. Uh, so damage avoidance... Let's see, damage absorption has a cap. Damage avoidance does not have a cap. Damage avoidance just adds numbers into the chart for where you can get it, where you'll get a glancing blow. Uh, but that doesn't have a cap. I was going to say, if damage avoidance had a cap, then subtracting some might still leave people at their cap, but it doesn't have a cap. So it should be just applying a negative buff to it. So I'll have to go and look and see what's up for it or up with it. It's another one where it's probably not super visible to players. And the only way to test it right now to verify it would be to like do something a thousand times to some other thing and see if it actually gave you different results. <clears throat> 
You got one? Uh, yeah. Um, this will be me asking you a question. Uh, can we break down the crafted gems into fragments like uh, main gems, please? We're getting them in drops, fully crafted gems. I imagine because it was sold by a player who had crafted it, but and uh, it would be nice to be able to do something with them besides vendor them. So I imagine as long as they're not given back the same number of fragments it took to craft them, like a just considerably yeah. smaller number, then it would be okay, right? So yeah. it wouldn't just, yep. yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's a pretty easy one is you've been mastering system after system. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's a pretty easy data. You just, it's, again, it's one of those things where it'll take you, you know, two to four hours to find the piece of thing you need to change and then 30 seconds to change it just like right. <laughs> many, many things in the game and learn how to do this stuff. Uh, spindle Skog loot is not adequate to the zone level. Will it ever be fixed? And shadow mobs randomly do insane damage to pets. Is it supposed to work that way? I had not heard about the insane damage pets. Uh, there's a couple things I've been looking at. One was the damage to weapons, like the weapons breaking uh, and armor breaking. Uh, getting some ra crazy numbers on it. Uh, I've not been able to reproduce that or even see how it could happen. I don't. It's not that I don't believe you. Uh, I just haven't been able to do it. The Spindle Skog loot is one right now that is, there's two things that need to happen for that. One is the thing I'm working on where I'm trying to come up with some unique loot for episode two scenes. Uh, that's not just the same thing where, you know, every scene in episode two is gonna get it where it's actually unique to that scene. <clears throat> Uh, I'm hoping to have some of that in for this release. The other part that needs to happen is one that has been on hold because of mounts that I can probably go and, I, I think I pushed it off, but I can probably do it myself, which is just going and finishing the dynamic episode two creatures right now have fixed loot and that loot is not getting adjusted based on the level of the creature. So that's one that uh, is not a huge task. I'd been putting it off because it's kind of one of those scary things anytime I have to touch that because as soon as I actually make that work then now I've got to go and populate all the loot tables and populating all the loot tables on these things is the part that's scary because uh, it's easy to come up with something where I'm giving you guys a million gold accidentally whoops and that totally won't break anything in the game uh, but that's okay. kind of the two things you need to happen one is we got to get the dynamic loot so higher level creatures if you're playing it in extreme mode you get extreme loot not just basic loot uh, and then the other is coming up again with some of these unique items for the unique zones. That part will probably happen this release. The uh, scaling loot will probably not happen for this release. It scales the experience, it does not scale the loot. Uh, we do have a kind of a pattern that I can follow for it though. It shouldn't be that tough to finish it up. This, this uh, one might be a, a pretty good, like significant bug report for you. Uh -oh. um, so it looks like Biomesis, is that what that says? Uh, that is tridents, because you know they do like three little mini attacks. Mm -hmm. The durability is lowering three times as fast as the spears. Oops. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that's good to know somebody's using that. That's one of those I look around, I was, uh, what was I doing? Oh, I was fumbling through the, basically the base attacks. Uh, runes that we have. The thing that does the base attack, like you swing the sword, it does that sword attack. Uh, then we do, it says your microphone's muted, but we can totally hear you. Testing one, two, three. Nope. Can't hear you. Didn't hear okay. Didn't hear that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. We can totally hear you. What? Oh, I got two mics on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, but I was stumbling through there and I saw the Trident rune and that was my first thought was, I was like, I wonder if anybody actually uses Trident, but I never actually went to research it. Uh, I know there's some good benefits that come with it, but, uh. Uh, I have an easy fix for that, which I will do right now while we wait. Uh, I'll tell you what, next time uh, Elgarion answers a question, I will fix it for you. So no pressure, Elgarion. Okay. Yeah, they can even see it says microphone muted at the bottom of your at the bottom of the Skype screen, but I can totally hear you. What? All right, I'll play with it later. <laughs> Either way, I'm back in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The girlfriend just brought me beard oil. First time I've used it, it'll be coming up. Wow. Yeah. Beard oil. Let's see. Well, I'm going to fix it anyways here. Uh, that's the rune. Let me get the trident. 
Okay, I'll fix it on my next pause. Uh, let's see. Lots more questions have come in since I last posted them over there. Let me see if I can copy some of those guys over for you. I don't know where the last batch started, but here's a bunch more in case you want to check them out. Cool. Uh, Sanyo has noted that capes need to drape correctly while riding and not clip into the horse. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. Yeah, this is this is one of those things uh, when we've told people in the past where, we, oh yeah, look at that, that looks horrible. Hmm. My magic trick where I cut the horse in half. Uh, when we've talked about the horses and we had, uh, I know on at least one stream in the past where we mentioned that it's like, I know a guy who added him to his game in a day. Uh, <laughs> sorry if you're still here and I just made fun of that's you got to understand when devs hear that type of stuff uh that's that's kind of what we it sounds like to us uh but it's this type of stuff where adding them to the game is easy now going back and fixing a thousand bugs uh that come from it like the cape doesn't properly drape over the horse when i'm sitting on it uh that's the type of stuff that is really that ends up taking up a lot of time oh yeah and then also the fun thing of what just happened there Oh, you know what? I think there, right there is another one that uh, just happened. Because I'm moving fast and I went off a hill. I think I did a jump. Yeah, look at that. So there, there's another one. Uh, one and only will be so pleased with me. Did you see what happened? That looked fancy. So we have a thing that you go into fall mode when you're moving. If you fall more than a certain distance. And we use uh, some things that are do some you know, semi-realistic physics. If you're going too fast down a slope, you'll be in like kind of continually bouncing down the slope thing. Except it looks like his uh, bouncing down the slope thing replays the mount animation that he had on there. Yeah, look at that. He doesn't have a jump animation yet, does he? <laughs> yeah, that's probably what go. it is. Sweet. Yes, <laughs> he does not, and that is on the list of things to... Yeah. That's still look, it's coming along though, definitely. Let's see. Uh, Ihanis has now said a September to remember on QA, and I don't believe that saying it on QA will actually get you a uh, get you in the prize. Oh, you know what? We're forty five minutes in, and we haven't done our first prize, and they're probably yelling prize and oh, yeah. prize and So let me go ahead and do that. Kick off the prize and I'll let you answer a question while I do that. Well, you want me to do a, is it okay, what, what were we talking about, two T's, it looks like we got a lot of traction on the teleporter stuff that we were talking about today, and we've had a meeting about it too, Yep. Uh, okay to tease that? Uh, yes, tease that, and then I'm okay. going to do some rapid fire question answering, because I've been getting distracted and sidetracked on a lot of this stuff, uh, but go ahead and tease that, tease. Okay, guys. So the Owl's Head Teleporter, the Brittany Teleporter, and the, wait for it, uh, the Arterist Teleporter that are currently on the Kodo store, uh, those are going to become um, programmable like your POT teleporters, meaning you get a pick from the list of all towns, POTs or NPC towns. And they're going to be renamed not to say Arterist Teleporter or whatever. Um, so you'll get more functionality out of those. Um, probably a little bit of a price drop on them too. Um, and then the uh, teleporters for that you, we just recently released for POTs are going to start allowing you to pick also NPC towns. Yay! So that's a big thing that's uh, be coming up here shortly. All right, let me do, oh, let me see if we got, uh, did we get our prize name on there? Okay, I'm going to read, uh, you read this prize name and then I'm going to go rapid fire some questions. Sure. Alrighty, so uh, for the first round of prizes, guys, we've got uh, Pop Lancermain, who has won the Cordovan Maple Inlay Drum. Congratulations. Yaga Bristly Legs has won the Birdcage. Ryan Mercury's won the Black Dragon Skin Rug. We've got Nubby Ear Wriggles has won the Ornate Public Cash Chest. And we've got Sean Silverfoot, who has won the five-piece one-man band. Congrats, guys. Hey, and uh, speaking of things player do or players don't like, I see John Marcus has decided to show up and drop 1337 bits. For those who don't know, uh, if... Uh, Did you feed Tucker? Breakfast. Now famous. 
Now Sorry. she's now now been seen on stream. Now famous. Uh, but uh, if you drop uh, thirteen thirty seven bits on one of the streams, I will now. sing you a song. Oh, I try <laughs> since we're since we're close to the end of the stream, I'll try and uh, sing you guys out as we get ready to raid somebody there. And uh, again, Majoria sent me a fastball song uh, that uh, is one of the ones I like that I know well. The ABC file for it, so I could do the ABC music thing for it. Except I'm on QA and I don't have my don't have it. Uh, so maybe I'll sing that anyways and then sing it again another time. And also, thank you, thank you, John Marcus, for the resub. Who else did I miss here? Solomon SK, thank you for the follow. Z of Silverdale, nice to see you, buddy. Uh, Darton Obscuro, also great to see you. Aaron Doom, thank you for the 500 bits. Sir Frank, another 500 bits. Thank you, thank you, Sir Frank. Uh, and Frank, Sir Frank, in case you missed it, I did mention the island for the uh, Lodi stuff. Uh, Stymie LLTS, Long Live the Syndicate. In case you guys didn't know, if you ever, ever see the LLTS, that is Long Live the Syndicate. I think for about the first uh, four or five uh, months of seeing that stuff, like Star and I would each try and like pronounce the LLTS, Stymielts. So wherever we'd say LLTS, we, we know better now. And uh, thank you again, Waldo and I Star Strider. Thank you very much. And uh, Dysis and all these other people. So I will sing you out on the song. Let me do some rapid fire question answering. Okay. I need to do more of this stuff because I, I can usually answer stuff quick. I just always end up babbling for so long. Let's see. Uh, Bridge Troll says if I turn off 2x experience points, I may go outside. Do not go outside. Actually, go outside and exercise. You need to get some sun. Vitamin D is very important, they've been finding, is there's a strong, again, don't know the cause, but definitely a strong correlation uh, between people with high vitamin Ds and vitamin D deficiencies and people who are getting sick. So uh, definitely go outside some. Uh, let's see. You answered the crafted gems. Uh, Arcane Essences, we already talked about that. Are there exciting new Halloween things this year? I no, yeah, we talked about that yeah, too. There's Damon's big secret for good stuff coming up. Yeah, there's a secret big stuff, cool stuff coming up. Uh, let's see. Uh, Radicus 2K, can we get a drop down checkbox in inventory to hide locked items for those of us that carry multiple sets of gear attached to decks? Hmm. Yeah, that's. That would be a good one. That's one I've, I've actually been queuing up some of these quality of life things for the different interfaces on uh, uh, one and only since he's given us some more time here. But I may have to distribute stuff around because he's probably going to be wrapped up with a bunch of these mount bugs that are coming up. Uh, but yeah, I, I like that because, yeah, you probably don't want to see that most of the time. And it clutters up your inventory if you've got like four mm -hmm. sets of gear or something like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pop Lancer main. Of the Lancer main clan. So if we salvage a rare artifact, do we get the four ancient essences? I still have not got that in there. I, I keep meaning to do that, making the salvage for the higher tier artifacts uh, give more than the single essence back. I, I will try and get to that. That should be a tedious but fairly quick one. So that's like just more salvage stuff? Like I tried to... Yeah, uh, basically the, if you, you know, if you find a common, you know, uh, ring of uh, the cat or whatever then any salvage it you get one ancient essence if you take four of those and combine them to make an uncommon and you salvage it you get one you take four uncommons and you combine that to get a you see where this is going right you salvage and it you want it one you wanted a one for one trade-off uh it's not going to be one to one in return the thing i'd said before was uh probably either 3x or 2x per level so like you get one and then three, and then nine, and then 27, or something like that. Uh, so you can get quite a few back. You won't get it back as many as you could have had from the base salvage, though. Okay. I'm sorry, that's one of those that's been on my list. Uh, and we did, actually this week, one of the topics of our team meeting was uh, clearing up Jira, because many of us had gotten to the point that we were drowning in tasks to the point, and it's not just that, you know, we need to track it, but one of the problems we have is we have so many people had so many prop, so many bugs, including myself, so many tasks on them that you lose track of what's actually important in the stuff that is like the short thing. And that's, so a lot of that stuff got cleaned up this week. I think I actually maybe only have 
two that I'm looking at for this release, but I can go move some of those up uh, so I can try and get them done because that's that's a pretty safe one for me to go and address. Can we get ore essences so we can make our own mining dungeons? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, there's a one the, that's one of the things I mentioned earlier. There's a live patch that hasn't gone live. That's actually one of the there's a actually a couple of bug fixes in it. But there's a big bug fix in it for dungeons, which is the one where uh, basically rooms were getting lost, rooms were getting detached and disconnected. It all had to do with the order in which they were created. So uh, this will fix those. I believe it also brings back those rooms that are lost. If you're one of those poor bastards who has uh, some rooms floating out in the ether somewhere. Uh, this should help you out. Let's see. Rapid fire. Uh, the real black axe. When can crafting ingredients be accessible from the bank while working at the table? That's one of those things we've talked about. Uh, I think actually I've mentioned this and this is one of those where I probably derailed the conversation on this because we always look for things. Right now we have the, for those who don't know, we have a rewards program. Uh, but the rewards program and it gives you like some items and uh, you know some crowns per month But it doesn't actually give you anything in game. That's one of the things looking at other games I always try to see what other games are doing uh, Not because I want to you know necessarily copy but it's good for ideas and That's one of those things we don't really do with our rewards program is we don't have any convenience items like that Because that type of thing is totally a convenience item if you're you know if we had you as a rewards program person letting you access the stuff at an invent or at a crafting table uh, that you would normally have to go to the bank because really that's just saving you some time on a walk to the bank which probably is somewhere pretty close by anyways uh, but I probably derailed that conversation but uh, that is one of the ideas that I really liked let's see uh, new mining zone is not in yet Let's see, Serenia Melorian said that my sturgeon this week never showed up on the one-day board or the seven-day board. A sturgeon, okay. Yeah, that was, that was, she was the one that brought up that she thought the fishing leader boards were broke. And okay. uh, when, since her fish evidently is not on there, well, when I read the fishing contest results, we'll see why that's important because she's one of the winners. <gasps> yeah. All right, well, yeah, if she's uh, one of the winners there, then it definitely should be on there. Okay, well... Uh, yeah. I need to talk to Undone about a few things anyways. Uh, oh, that's another exciting thing we didn't talk about. I, and actually, I haven't checked on. Uh, but I know we've got a few new uh, maps in-game. Yep. Uh, no, Tangle Myers is one of them. I'm yep. not sure. Tangle Myers. Are, so. uh, but uh, we, Undone came over and helped us with some stuff on that as well. We're going to get lots more Undone help, though, it sounds like. Which is exciting. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, he's also the guy that... You know, again, almost anything in the game, the uh, any engineer on the game should be able to work on, including myself. Uh, but there's a lot of things, there's a lot of inertia to look at a system that you haven't touched before. Because, again, it seems like some of these things are easy. When you look at a system like the leaderboards, it's really actually a pretty complex system and how, how that has to be managed and how the data is managed. And how we have it so you know it can be updated from all the stuff in the game and players can view it and we can there's it's actually a pretty complete or complicated system so that one actually involves some uh elastic search and some python scripts that run on schedule and just a lot of stuff that probably is not obvious in terms of but anyways the short version is if we have a system like that that has a problem, usually we, I will delay rather than trying to get somebody who has time right now to do it. I'll delay until the person has time to fix it. So we'll get, we'll get undone to fix that next time he's uh, helping us, which will be this next week almost certainly. Let's see. Oh, and uh, speaking of things breaking, uh, I need to do... We, I pulled data on the pink dyes, the hot pink dyes, the Kuntash dyes that we we're doing for charity. Uh, and discovered that our data only goes back a certain uh, length, uh, and I was having some problems with the other ones. So, but I do have some numbers on that. But uh, uh, I'll probably make that into a whole ceremony where we do it at some point. But that's going to be money to charity. But I won't do it uh, today. Maybe we'll set a date. Maybe like for end of the month or something like that. But 
we're going to continue doing it. It's just one of those things where it's just kind of been trickling in, you know, so we hadn't really thought about doing the, the donation. But we want to make sure people know we are actually doing that, and I will be making a donation charity, and we'll probably get, like, screenshots of it or something. But anyways, that's still happening. Remember, if you buy those things, those charity things, uh, we do actually keep up with that stuff, even though it cost me uh, several hours of work to track down the older ones as it fell off of our, our short-term mining metrics. Let's see. Looking for some more here. Let me click real quick. I think I need to click the button again. Did we, you read off the, uh, the winners, right? Yeah, just for the first round. Okay. And, and I've still got events and fishing results. Fishing's back on, so I got fishing results. <coughs> Speaking of uh, stuff Undone does that pulls data from Elastic uh, Database and uh, uses Python script and other stuff that I only touch if I have to. That's also the prize in anything which I'm staring at here. Waiting for it. Waiting for it. We'll have prizes in a minute, though. Uh, I'm trying to think. We had a bunch. There's a bunch of other little stuff that went in. Oh, I didn't. You know what? This is supposed to be a stream where we talk about food buff stuff, and I didn't really talk about it hardly at all. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, so there's the way the food channel buffs. So this is a big change for the game. So let me let me see if I can figure out how to get off my horse. Here we go. Uh, let me find some whiskey, some alcohol to add here. So this is one if you, in on a past stream or two, I probably mentioned uh, that I was adding buffs for alcohol, but I didn't want to add it because, yet, because I want to have other drinks in there and make it a drink channel. Because I didn't want to force players who, in real life, you know, for whatever reason, don't want to drink and don't want to do it in-game as well. I totally get that. So that's part of why I delayed that stuff, but then I actually just, since the Food Channel stuff was coming in and it would let you use alcohol as a buff and that, and you wouldn't have to use it, you'd have lots of other alternatives. Uh, I delayed the alcohol stuff until now, but it should be in actually here on, uh, on QA now. So, the Food Channel stuff. This is, for those who don't know, I had some people ask questions, I think somebody asked on my Twitter stream, or, uh, feed uh, what was the goal for the food stuff for the food changes which is way more than I'm going to fit in a Twitter feed uh, again for those who don't know I do keep a Twitter feed you can go follow me it's catnip games all I do is talk about and I'm pretty good at replying to stuff on there uh, about stuff for shroud uh, and I am using that largely because it is a quick conversation I'm always busy I it's I like that it's you don't have much room to ask a question, and I don't get much room to answer, and I never spend much time on it. I uh, really just use it for quick broadcasts. I've actually asked Taz to put my Twitter feed on the front page of the website so it's more open to people, because I know a lot of people don't want to go check Twitter or log into Twitter or whatever. Oh, nice. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've noticed that. Yeah, people are like feeling like they have to go to different places to get the info, but yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it's just on the front the website. We've, there's, uh, our website is initially built with WordPress, and uh, it should still work on there. Uh, but anyway, so the goal for it, we had, for those who hadn't heard or haven't heard me talk about our food system, we had a lot of cool foods. A uh, hundred plus cool foods and you know other stuff that you could find. You could find like pick up an apple off the ground and eat it. You could make your own food. You could bake food. You could have like, you know, stews made from rare creatures or dragon meat or whatever. The problem with it was, and it just used the system that we had in place where you could have, you can just set a number of a certain type of buff that goes on. We called that internally, we called that the channel system. That is a horrible name for it, though. Uh, and really all it is is it just says on the food channel, on the food buffs, how many can I have? On the blessings buffs, how many can I have? On the whatever. So that was a the system we've had for years, but it is... Honestly, it's a little too primitive to allow for some of the control for food. Because the problem with food ends, ends up being is you can have two of them. So that apple buff, you're never going to eat that apple. That's going to go throw away or carrot or whatever else, or even the lesser foods that you find out there. It always ends up being in our lovely min-max world. I uh, love you guys out there, min-maxers. <coughs> But it always ends up being you're not going to eat any lesser food. That means there's always going to be one or two foods or three or four foods that rise to the top. Now that is 
that's good if there's a level of scarcity that makes it so those foods are really hard to get really rare. Uh, but just due to the way things set up, it's really hard to get a good level of scarcity. And when we do get a scarcity, one of the, that's one of the things we've, we've pushed in various places and honestly having a very scarce item so scarce that you wouldn't eat that food you'd eat other food having it that rare ends up frustrating players quite a bit as well as we've seen with you know various things like dragon head drops or you know whatever the item is uh there's it's a fine line for where scarce things should be scarce and not you know too common so really what it ends up being is you end up without having a real scarcity in there. You end up, everybody ends up eating the same three foods, uh, largely. The lesser foods get eaten almost never. Looking into them, I actually had to go and like investigate. There's a lot of foods out there that have not been eaten once in the last two weeks. They've been crafted a lot. And that's one of those things is players will craft food. They have the ingredients and they'll craft it because they get experience out of it. A lot of times I've seen people craft or some of them, I'm like, well, why would anyone ever make this food when I looked at it? And it's a lot of people who it's like they're a first time crafter. Of course, you get some, you know, extra experience buffs or bonuses for making an item for the first time. So, yeah, sure. Bake that thing four times and then never make it again. But then nobody ever eats it. So, anyways, trying to make it so food is meaningful. We have a lot of uh, different foods out there. The crafters can make a lot of these different foods. And we want to make sure uh, that content gets used. That's one of the problems we've always had is like we have a ton of content that does not get used. So some of this is reusing the content, but also it's about choices for the players. When there's three buffs that are foods that are better than any of the others, you're, that's, guess what, that's where you're going. So it's about balancing those out so you can actually have choices on food. So having the different number of buffs is the other thing uh, that is going to new this time is now rather than it being you can have two buffs, uh, two uh, buffs. The, you can now have uh, up to six points of buffs. And a, a food, a when you mouse over a food now, it'll tell you how many points it'll take up. Yay, fireworks. Uh, but it'll tell you how many points it'll take up on channel. So you can have up to six at a time. Now, the other interesting thing about this is one of the rare items that I'll probably be adding to one of the new zones is a ring that will increase the number of food buffs you can have going at a time. So it'll probably add one or two points. You can have seven or eight points of food buffs. So you can actually have more food buffs going at a time. Uh, so having adding switching to the new system we have, we can do that. Now, the reason for having the, the points rather than just being you get two buffs, period. The two buffs, period, is obviously easier to understand, although even that was causing some confusion because people didn't know and they would you know overwrite their other buffs or whatever, try to use more foods. Uh, so I'm getting more, <coughs> more information in there, more tooltips in there. It should now show you the number of points. But now you'll be able to, to have, like, not all food buffs are equal. You know, if you want to have, like, the dragon stew or whatever, that'll take up three, that'll take up half of your points. That'll take up three points on the, the food buffs. So, oh, and that's, that's right. I can do some fun stuff here. Make it look like you fell in the water. Uh, but... Uh, so again, this makes it so we can take we can take a pass at balancing things. We can still make dragon stew the coolest food. We can make it even per point. We can make it cooler than the others, but it doesn't have to be as dramatic as do I want to have dragon stew or do I want to eat a carrot? Uh, no one's going to eat the carrot. I mean, they'll eat the carrot because they don't have any other food. Like a noob might eat the carrot, but we want to make sure that there's actually some point in those things ever being used. So one of the things we're doing is working on extending the durations of them, even for the lesser foods. That's one of the places where we separated the good foods from the bad foods was like a lot of those buffs, you know, had five minute, 15 minute durations where the good buffs had like four hours or eight hours. So we're going to be trying to get most of them up to at least like a half hour to an hour. That will be one of the places where we will measure up scarcity is the more things created for more scarce things. They can have longer durations than the short ones. <clears throat> uh, the target goal for the the uh, stuff and again this is what I've set but I have not looked to see what work has been done on it I did do the one on ones on the alcohol buffs which I can show you here in a minute uh, but the target goal for them if you guys recall me going and talking to players and even doing a quick poll for how many points of strength something was equivalent to like 
if you could choose between 10 points of strength or X points of attunements, uh, what is X? Uh, so using that, making the target, setting the target for what food should roughly be, and then varying that up, you know, plus or minus uh, 10, 20, 30, even 50% for the really scarce foods or the ones that are hard to make. Uh, that was kind of the goal. And so the target that we have is per point, roughly five points of a stat, uh, five points of strength equivalent. So that means for dexterity, int, and strength, uh, of course it varies by build is how valuable those are, but you'll get roughly five points of those things. Now, if you it was health, I think that ended up being about 25 points. So the same food that might give you five points of strength might give 25 or 30 points of health or the same to your focus pool. Uh, there's another number for resist. I forget what it is, but it's kind of in the, you know, five points or of strength might end up being uh, eight points of attunement in a stat. But that's kind of the target for them. So that's per point of uh, food that it takes up. So if you have like the current ones that are three point foods, like a dragon stew, that'll be somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 points of, of uh, strength equivalent. So anyways... So the goal, again, is to make it so we're not trying to make all foods equal. We're not trying to make it so it's just, you know, you can either eat three, five strength buffs or you can eat one fifteen and same. It's going to be very different, but you'll have actual choices on things. The goal, and again, some things are more common than others, and that's one of the, the problems we've had is even those things that are, they had foods you can make with them, unless they were a good food buff, nobody cared about them, nobody wanted them. Uh, so now some of those things that are dropping out there in the world, some of these drops that we intended to be meaningful, but they weren't meaningful because there's nothing really to do with them, because the thing you could do with them was craft food that nobody wanted with them. So hopefully those are going to be more valuable. It'll also get people eating more food, which will be good for anybody out there who's a crafter. Uh, again, this gives us some opportunities as well. I mentioned before that we just updated for this release. I know it's being used by... Uh, Beezus on some stuff, but we're going to use it on a few more things. We just updated our crafting system so that we can have, rather than having a, here's the outcome of what you crafted, we can actually replace that and have loot bundles, which lets us do kind of like a roll type thing. So what that means is we can go in and say when you craft your, uh, you know, your wolf surprise uh, pie or whatever, or is it bear surprise? I forget which one it is. But anyways, when you craft your uh, bear pie, that depending on your skill level, you might actually be able to get something cooler out of it and get a more rare version of the the uh, bear pie out of it. And that's one of those things, again, that pulls in some of the crafting skills and makes it so having a really good crafter who's really good at cooking is actually meaningful again. Not again, it was never meaningful, but now it will be meaningful in the future. So, uh, Anyways, I could talk for hours on that, but we got to get, uh, I got to feed the family. Have I read off? I didn't read off the prizes yet, did I? Let's see, I'll read them off. Hold on, I have to reply to someone here. Uh, let's see, this is the second prize in Even though you guys were crazy generous and super nice to us, stupid uh, Twitch said no hype train. There's no hype train today. I'm sad. I wish I knew what the uh, cause of that was. But again, thank you, Mandalar. Mandalar. Thank you, Malhari. Thank you, the real Black Axe. Thank you, One Blood Omen One. Uh, John Marcus, I will get to your song here in a minute. But let me read off the prizes, and then uh, we're going to let El Garion announce fishing stuff, and then I'm going to sing you guys out as I raid somebody else. We got a few new people I, who I knew, know are raiding, so I'm going to look to see if one of those guys, or not raiding, who are streaming, so if one of those guys is on, I'm going to give him a raid here. Uh, but the prizes, Cordovan Maple Inlay Drum goes to Telana. Uh, Birdcage goes to Ian Berry. Black Dragon Skin Rug goes to Zach Zyrus. Ornate Public Cash Chest goes to Turva Hata. Five Piece One Man Band goes to Hawkwind. That's my Batman voice. I'm not sure why I said Hawkwind in Batman voice. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, is that one of the people I just called out? That's not one of the people I just called out. Oh. Taylana, maybe Taylana is Traylana. Maybe I'm just a guess. All right, are you ready up there, microphone muted guy? 
Yep, uh, you can hear me, right? I can hear you. Just okay, fine. Okay, cool. I think I found the double mic thing. Testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, we heard both of those. Oh, you, you did? Yeah. Okay. You didn't find so it. I guess that didn't work. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I got some <laughs> events to go over with you guys. Uh, so the upcoming community events, well, here, let me go over the phishing results first. That makes a little more sense. So this past week, uh, the phishing contest has resumed, and it was taking place for the POTs in Caerdrockwich in New Britannia Market in Rock Ridge. The PVP location was Cost Ruins, and the lava fishing location was Sunless Barrens. And the winners of the fishing contest are as follows. So to win a player on town robot deed, no trade, and the large gold fishing trophy, uh, that was um, the winning fish was fished out of Rock Ridge. It was a sturgeon measuring in at 2.673 ambiguous units. Serenia Malorian, congratulations. I'll get that stuff sent out to you here in a little bit. Uh, for the two chained obsidian shard three pack and a large silver fishing trophy, fish out of cost ruins, a king salmon measuring in at 2.254 ambiguous units. And that was fished out by Stein. Congratulations, Stein. And for the lava fishing portion, winning a fishing rod of prosperity and a large uh, bronze fishing trophy, fished out of Sunless Baron's course, 7.867 ambiguous units, a plesiosaurus, fished out by Ava Thorne. Congratulations. You guys rock. And I'll get a participation from trophies out to everybody uh, Monday morning. Uh, of note, uh, those, uh, I got a new thing where I'm, data logging so you don't actually have to send me your fish anymore and it, mm -hmm. uh, other than a little bit of setup uh, picking the winners for upcoming contests is going to go much faster so I'll have time to run another type of contest and I think we do something called bounties and we'll, I'll give you guys more information that may with the release update notes um, so here let's see what the upcoming events are so we got one that isn't going too well. I've got a, a community event. I did a screenshot video contest announcement. I don't have any nibbles yet. So if you're currently working on it, be sure to message me because uh, chances are since we've not had anybody kind of post any comments um, about participating, I'm venturing to say we won't have enough participants. But me message me if you are uh, working on something uh, just so I know there is something out there. But if not, I'll just reformat it into maybe a broader spectrum screenshot contest that isn't limited to just fireworks and stuff. You can take pictures of adventure and PVP and whatever you want to take pictures of. Your decoration, for instance, your housing. And then we'll just let it run for a little bit longer. Then also the upcoming community event, Catnip Games Weekly Fishing Tourney. We have got uh, this week, it's going to be freshwater fishing. The POTs are Devil's Lair, Rinzai, and Nightmare Falls. Uh, the lar uh, so the uh, PvP location is going to be in Disboard Ruins, and the Lava Fishing location will be in Verdantis Mines. Also, uh, we've got a new uh, video posted by Skeggy, and Skeggy Media. He's a streamer for Shroud the Avatar, and he's got tons of tutorial videos up on his channel to keep some updated. So if you see something out of date, let him know. But he's got a new one posted, and I got that up on the, the events uh, posting here on this page. And of course we've got Baron's Reach. They love doing some great uh, uh, stuff lately, like their art, like that one picture I got there is like a, an artist's uh, rendition of their marketplace. And they just happen to have a Baron's Reach market day coming up Ooh. and an auction house event, both on the same weekend. So we've got um, the things they'll be doing are, uh, they have available there a full set of crafting tables and um, lots of commission free vendors for people to use customizable market tables where they can put down their own decorations, open air speaker sessions, and uh, a, a stage with audience seating and a bar area, and also a governor help desk. It's kind of cool. But on that's going to be kicking off, let's see here, September 20th uh, on Sunday at 2 p.m. Central. <laughs> and then a little bit earlier on the 20th, they actually have an auction house event going on. It's going to be 11 a.m. Central. So if you're interested in participating, head on over to Baron's Reach. And of course, Avatar Express needs you. That's right, they're looking for reporters and uh, also uh, looking for player on towns to volunteer for uh, uh, writing articles about. So be sure to get with uh, Sean Butts and crew if you're uh, interested. And so, uh, yeah. here's something that's uh, uh, for you from, uh, this is a reply to one of my tweets from Beetle Bear. It says, where can one learn more about Elgarion's rise to power? I respected <laughs> and admired him, so or so back in the day it was great to see him even more involved with the game these days is he still reading stories poetry etc 
I can't believe no, I get on stream and I you used don't to do that, read poetry on earlier on. <laughs> Maybe we could like really make the fans happen. We can get like uh, Scotty on here, and you and uh, Scotty can uh, read poetry or Shakespeare together or something. Yeah, well, he's he's got an eloquence to him, and a, and also a gift of gab that kind of goes well with it. That uh, yeah, his language that he can use is just like far superior to what I can muster <laughs> up. He's an awesome orator, and he's an actor too. Actor, actor. That's <laughs> All right, let's see. So I think we're about done here. Does that wrap up everything for you? I think so. All right, because I got to sing people out here. On uh, thanks to uh, thanks to John Marcus taking or paying us a visit here. This is one I'll sing again on one of my streams on my Wednesday stream, which I have not done like in two weeks now. Uh, but I will be doing it again. Uh, but uh, I'll sing it on my stream where I have music backup accompaniment. Uh, but let's see, this is a uh, fastball, but I'm going to sing while I send you out. I'm going to be doing a raid. You don't need to pick a person because I promised somebody if they were there, we would raid them. Oh, and we got a lot of good people here to raid. The Graceful Bard is out there. Uh, she is amazing. Oh, and it looks like she's wearing pirate stuff. Oh, I can't believe I can't raid her. Uh, Torque is here. Uh, Torque has a hat on, but it does not look like a pirate hat. Sorry, Torque. Uh, Silver Tree uh, Consortium's here. Last Diameter's here. Man, so many good uh, people to choose from. But we have someone who's just getting into stream that I promised I'd give them a raid if they were on. So we are going with the ODE stream with Lancel. The Lancer Main Clan. Go give uh, Lancel a follow. You can see how they do things. They're actually... Uh, uh, she's on stream here, but she's also one of those people where she is both amazing in-game and amazing out-of-game. Uh, talk to her all the time, but she actually knows how to play. It's crazy. Their whole guild actually knows how to play. They, uh, they've done a good job of helping break stuff for me occasionally when I've needed feedback on things. I still need to get some of their feedback in as well. Uh, but let's see. Let's give them a raid. Let me get find my lyrics here for this song. Alright, so I get to sing for 60 seconds here. Guys, again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for supporting the game. Uh, thank you for staying safe. We will leave the 2x experience on until, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, we get the experience point stuff adjusted uh, so we can control that a little better and balance things out a little more. Uh, and uh, I think that's probably it. I'm going to give these guys a raid here. Let's see if I got the name right. All right, we will be going there. But until then, I will be singing to you. You may not leave early. No, you may not. Uh... This is uh, Fastball, local Austin band, good band, and uh, I'll sing Majoria's version here next time I'm on the, the normal, uh, normal version of the game, not the QA version. Sometimes I feel like I am drunk behind the wheel, the wheel of possibility, however it may roll. Give it a spin, see if you can somehow factor in. You know there's always more than one way to say exactly what you mean to say. Was I out of my head? Was I out of my mind? How could I have ever been so blind? I was waiting for an indication. It was hard to find. Doesn't matter what I say, only what I do. I never mean to do bad things for you. So quiet, but I finally woke up. If you're sad, then it's time you spoke up, too. I really should practice these things more. This will be my practice for the actual one in there, for the actual one I do next week. Guys, uh, thank you, John Marcus. Uh, that'll be my practice. Next time we'll do it with music accompaniment. Guys, we are rating like three seconds. Have a great weekend. Be safe. See you guys. All right. We have rated. I am.